Hey everybody, uh, I'm not a locksmith or anything, but I've been rekeying quick set locks for quite a while. Uh, uh, doorknobs, deadbolts, so on and so forth, the old school style, which are actually one of the easiest locks to rekey. I uh, just got done watching a few videos on the new uh, smart key system and uh, control key system smart key for Quickset, which uh, I think we might be uh, switching over a lot of our properties to that. But uh, I'm the guy that rekeys the locks uh, and master keys the locks uh, with the tenant key and the master key on these older Quickset locks like this, uh, which is just, I, I, I'm not sure of the number, but as you can see, this in here. There's that key there. You can see the shape of it. Here is my master key right here. As you can see, that's a different shape. Works in the lock. There's the tenant key. Works in the lock. You have two keys that work for each lock. This is the old the old way to do things. The uh, the new uh, control locks were pretty. In Interest are the control key, smart key locks by Quickset are a pretty good deal. I'm gonna probably end up be switching a lot of my houses over to that. Uh, but as for 20 years now, this is the way we've been doing it, and I've had about that much experience or more rekeying these locks. And I did watch a uh, a few videos on how this is done, and the Quickset locks, which is a, a five uh, a five pin uh, system. Uh, which are very, very has very, very close lock to the Titan locks, which uh, have a lot more uh, what do you call it technological built into them. I haven't really done the Titans. Uh, you can use a Titan key, which is a six-pin key in a five-pin uh, quick set, because uh, it uses the KW1 keyway. Uh, but other than that, that they have the Callaway or the the. Uh, what is that key? Uh, let me get them here right quick. You can also use these keys. Uh, Callahan. C-A-L-L-A-N. Callan or Callan, however you want to pronounce that. These are original keys from a, a key maker too that makes locks that work in the quick set locks. Uh, they use the KW1 key, which let me see if I have any copies here. This one doesn't say it. It's an access key that was made at Walmart, but uh, it's the uh, the KW1 key slot uh, or keyway that I'm pretty good at doing. Uh, and I'm going to run through all different aspects of how to do these locks. Uh, I know I watched a few videos when they're saying, "Yeah, use this color, use that color," and sometimes the pins don't come colored, and sometimes they get mixed up. Uh, which can be very aggravating. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you how to key a lock uh, very simply, uh, not using anything but pins and a key. Oh, uh, no colors or anything like that. Uh, which you know happens a lot of the times. You know, you, if you want to look at my key box here, this is the. Uh, let me get my scratch paper out of the way here. This paper right here, the paper, the paper, the paper right here gives you all kinds of stuff like the pin and it actually gives you the pin number up here at the top right here. It gives you the actual micrometer inches of each pin, so on and so forth. That's good to follow. But this, this kit right here is the Quick Set Titan keying kit number 271 I guess for professional keying of all Titan and residential locks uh, I mainly use this for quick set locks that's what we use on all our rental houses uh, they're very inexpensive they work uh, sometimes you run into problems that the locks start getting worn and the actual cylinder here with the shield starts becoming it starts, I don't know if you can see that, you have a little bit of movement in there and that starts causing you problems when you pretty much uh, are master keying locks. Other than that, uh, if you're just keying a lock to one single key, they work very well even though they have a little bit of play in them. But if you're master keying a lock, uh, you really want a new lock, a new, a, a new shield with a new tumbler or cylinder as they say. Uh, make sure all, all your pins are not worn 
uh, because when your master keying locks, uh, you have pins like this. Let me look at this master pin one right here. Uh, let me pull this thing out. If you can, oh, it's gone. Let me get another one. They're very technical. Twe tweezer stuff here. All right, if you can look at this one here, look at the thickness of that. It's very fine. It is, on a master pin one, it is .023 inches, which is very small. And when these locks start getting a little bit of play in them, uh, what happens is the pin actually gets sucked around between the cylinder and the shield here. And once that happens, the lock locks down about three quarters of the way through it, and you have tenants calling you in the middle of the night saying, I can't get into my house and everything like that. You have to wiggle the key a lot. Uh, usually, if you're master pinning a lock or master keying a lock uh, on quick set, it's good to have a very tight tolerance cylinder and shield and not utilize any master pin ones especially if you have a worn lock that's got a little bit of a uh, play in it uh, it's at least good exercise to have a lock that does not utilize any of the master pin ones and at least use a master pin two or above uh, I've run into a lot of problems here lately uh, I've had I don't know 20 30 houses that I take care of and I have to master pin our master key these uh, quick set locks every year uh, and it has to be master keyed on the front door which that's the door the tenants always use so these locks start getting worn very quickly uh, unless you just have a lock that's been on a back door or one that's bought recently or something like that and it works usually pretty good uh, but let me show you let me put this cigarette out because it's not something I need to be doing but uh I'm going to show you the uh, process of just rekeying a lock here. Uh, first, I'm going to kind of give you the basics. If you have a quick set that has two holes in the front of it like this, this is a inside lock for a double cylinder lock. That's where you have the key on the inside and you have the key on the outside. Now, if you're in a house that has a solid door like that, and you cannot uh, get out of the house because someone has pulled the key out of the lock uh, and you can't open this lock because it's locked and uh, so on and so forth and there is a fire now uh, and you've got to get out of the house that's a bad deal uh, so most of the time I try to use let's see if I can't find one down here this is the inside now when you use a quick set lock like this it comes with a longer tailpiece. If you use a double cylinder, it comes with a shorter tailpiece. They interchange very easily. Now you can see the shorter one there and the longer one here. There's the shorter one. There's the longer one. It just it's just a little snap ring, and you can interchange those out on these tumblers. So if you have a double lock, you don't have to go out and buy a single tumbler or everything like that you just need to change out the tail pieces which you can get those off Amazon or eBay just in quick set parts so on and so forth but uh, if you have a single tum or a single cylinder quick set that goes with a single cylinder quick set inside part you can lock and unlock the door very easily uh, the screws that go with the single though this goes right in here like that the screws that go with the single are shorter than the ones that go with the doubles, which I've got one down here somewhere, but they're about that much longer, uh, just to compensate for, the, you know, compensate for that right there. Uh, I usually don't use uh, double cylinder locks unless there's a window right there next to the lock, so I'm gonna break out, just reach in and unlock your door. Uh, there's a couple houses I've got that uses doubles, but it, it, for the most part, I just use single cylinder locks. Uh, which use the longer tailpiece and the shorter screws, uh, which works very well. And uh, but anyways, uh, this lock here, I think this is this is the tenant key. Goes in, works. And where did my keys go? Here they are. Uh, this is my master key. Guess my master key seven. This is the seventh master key I've done, which you can see 
turns the lock. It's a little finicky because I've got a little wear in the lock, but there you go. I've got I've gone to a new master key just recently because I lost the original uh, master key seven, which uh, it's always good to make copies of a key off the original, especially if you're master keying a lock, which I know I'm saying I'm going to get into just keying a lock without the master key, but a lot of this has to do with tolerances. Uh, lock starts getting worn a little bit over time. It starts affecting the performance of the lock, the easeability of it. Just I, I guess the mechanics of the lock are kind of suffered a little bit, and you have to wiggle the keys. Uh, sometimes if you're, well, a lot of times you're using a master pin one, it'll get sucked into this portion of the lock here from the tumblers here and it locks the lock down and you'll have tenants calling you in the middle of the night saying you know i can't get into my house my key's stuck in the door or they beat the lock off the house and everything like that and that's what i'm starting to kind of uh, run into now so i'm kind of starting to look into the uh the control key smart key quick sets which are about 35 to 45 dollars a lock uh but they've got a pretty good deal uh i, I watched them on on uh youtube and I like the deal, the way they work, and everything like that. Uh, I've never used any, so therefore I can't give you how long they last, if they're good quality lock. I don't know anything about that. But uh, these older quick sets right here, uh, I know these like the back of my hand on a bright light. Uh, and I'm about to show you how, there's several ways you can rekey one of these locks. These are the easiest locks to rekey, master key, Master keying, although you know you get into the tolerance of the lock, uh, whether this is an original quick set key where it says quick set on it, uh, which if you have a quick set original key and a, which is the master key and another quick set original key which is the tenant key, the locks tend to perform quite well. Uh, but as it goes, you only get two keys that are originals, and uh, when you do that. Uh, Everybody that works for the company does not get an original quick set key. So the best way to do that is to at least have one original key that does not get moved anywhere or anything like that. And anytime a copy is made, it's made off the original. If anybody remembers the stuff back in the day with computers or actually uh, audio tapes or video tapes, you made a copy of this co or you made a copy of this tape. Now someone else makes a copy of that tape, someone else makes a copy of that tape, the quality of it suffers and the tolerances start suffering and it does not work after a while. Uh, so the best way to do it if you're master keying locks is to make a copy off the original every single time, whether it be a tenant key or the master key, uh, especially if your locks are starting to get a little bit of wear in them like mine are. Uh, but anyways. Let's get into just the basics of a quick set deadbolt cylinder. Now, this one here is the outside cylinder. Notice it does not have any holes in it like the inside cylinder. Uh, the inside cylinder, though, you always use one without the holes in it. Sometimes, if you want a cylinder on the inside, you use the one with the holes in it like this. You know, of course, you know, you have screws on the outside. You can take the lock apart and unlock it, uh, which... The inside will be either a a uh, lever like this, or it'll be a cylinder like this, whether it be a double, but you always use one of these uh, that does not have the holes. This is the outside part. It has a longer uh, screw way in it, and uh, it can be replaced by anything. Uh, but anyways, let's get into just the basics of it. This lock here, uh, here, let me kind of get my table set up here a little bit better. Here's my pen. Uh, dial calipers. A uh, very cheap model. I think I paid $15, $13 for this at uh, Harbor Freight. Uh, very, very, very handy tool to have if you're doing any kind of keying. Uh, you can always check tolerances that way. Pretty. It, 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 it's not It's not the, uh, the most, most accurate tool on the market like Storette or uh, any of the micrometers or anything like that, but just a uh, cheap dial caliper, or not dial caliper, but digital caliper like, like this here. You open it up. You can always send it back here like this. It's zeroed out right now, but you can zero it out here. Notice, you know, I come in, it's a negative. Zero it out again, totally closed. And you can measure all your pins 
and see if they are too tolerant. Uh, this is one of the most major things that I have found uh, to rekeying these locks if you have old pins or new pins. I mean, always best to use new pins and everything like that, but invertibly, you know, it's always good to check your pins before you put them into the lock because then you have a bunch of stuff done and you have a bunch of stuff done and your lock doesn't work by the time you get it all back together and you're like, why doesn't it work? Why doesn't it work? And you got to take the thing totally apart again. So it's always good to go slow and do it right the first time. Uh, usually it's better right here on the top, if you can see this, uh, there is a little sheath here on, on the top. And this is where the springs and the locking pins are kept. And uh, right here is your shear line in this lock. Let me get in the light here. Right here is the shear line. Your locking pins and everything and springs are kept into this. A lot of padlocks I watched and everything like that, you actually have to use a, a push cylinder and push this out with a, with a shear slide. You shear slide in the back and lock it all together and push this out and then you have to replace the pins and everything from the inside of the cylinder here. Quick sets are so easy. Watch this. You take the point of this nail file, you slide it under here, pop it up. Take it off slowly. There's your springs. Your springs pop up. Here's a little, the little cap for the springs. All right, let's go up here to the table. All right, I'm going to take this lock right here, and I'm going to just dump these things out. Now, most of the pins will come out as long as the key, the the cylinder here pins are on the top side and come out the top usually just kind of tap it a few times and then it will spin freely as you can see that as I'm doing by the tailpiece here okay now oh my goodness how am I gonna rekey this lock uh, again take this or a little jewelry screw screwdriver flathead screwdriver granted this is the best thing to use to pop this little ring off here but if you do it just right, you can take that off just like that. Get it like that. Pull the ring off. There's the retainer ring. There's the cylinder. Tail piece falls right off. So now you have the cylinder with the holes in it. It goes right in there like that. And it'll spin freely. To key anything to any lock or anything like that. Hey, I don't know what pin or anything I've got here. Uh, granted, the springs here, you always got to put the springs back in it. And uh, now to decipher from your locking pins and your actual key pins, which is the bottom pin, and then you have the top locking pins. The bottom pins, if you can see this, I don't know if you can see this very well or not, let me get it right here, and a locking pin, let me get a locking pin out here. Now there's two types of locking pins, there's a, there, there's a little bit longer locking pin and there's a little bit shorter locking pin, let me get all three of them up here. Uh, granted it's not that much tech, technicality between the longer and shorter, unless you're going to an extreme bottom pin at for say a one or a six because if you use a six, you need a shorter locking pin. If you use a one, you need a longer locking pin. Other than that, if you're not using those two, uh, it doesn't really matter too much. You can stretch a spring a little bit. You can take a spring like this, if it's just sitting right at the top. You can stretch a spring a little bit like that. You know, just a little bit, not too much, but you can make it just a hair longer and it works quite well. Uh, so therefore it's not that big of a deal where you use a short or a long, but if I have a six pin, I usually put a short pin, a locking pin in there. If I have a one, I usually put a longer locking pin in there. And I usually use the, the longer locking pins. And if the spring's too long, I'll take it out. And if you can see here, this spring's shorter than that one, you know, just use it when you put it back here in the lock here in a little bit, I'll show you how, how that works. But what I'm wanting to show you right now is this pin right here. If you can see the edges of it, it's tapered. Can you see that edge? There's tapered. Mm -hmm. Now it's tapered on both ends. 
it doesn't matter which way you put that pin in there but that's the bottom pin that's just the bottom pin right there this pin right here which is a locking pin there is no taper there it's a hard edge 90 degree angle same way with the shorter locking pin it's a hard edge on both ends that's the ones that lock the lock uh, on on these older quick sets uh, which isn't that big of a deal there's not much difference uh, between the locking pins it's a point one eight oh for the longer locking pin and the shorter locking pin is point one six oh right there and as you can see down here on the bottom pins you can see the taper on them up here on the on, on, on the locking pins see there is no taper up here on the top section of this kit here's the master pins this is when you start doing master pins uh, they've got a little bit of a taper to them but not much uh, that's one of the reasons why the locks get a, a little bit more finicky if you're master pinning the locks the bottom pins have much more of a taper on them they're much more usable if the locks got some more wear in it and so on and so forth but anyways uh, let me show you this little tool this right here is the gauging tool notice it goes from 0 to 7 now starting out on a key back here here's your shoulder of the key the first one down here is your number one pin and let's just gauge it it's a three so you got a three one two three Four. So whatever I said. Three, one, two, three, four. Three. One, two, three, four. Three, one, two, four. So let's write that down. Three, one, two, three, four. Three, one, two, three, four. Three, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. That's the five pins right there on this key. Granted, this this lock right here was master pinned, or not master pinned, but master keyed. So I'm just going to show you an easy way to do this. Uh, if you have the numbers here and your kit is set up right, none of the pins have gotten crossed over here and everything like that. Because after time, as you can see, these are all gold pins. Uh, my number two pins are almost gone. These here kind of have a blue tint to them here and there. These kind of have a green tint to them here and there. These have a red tint to them here and there. But there's also ones in here that don't. They're all gold. Uh, six down here kind of have a red tint to them also, but that might be a five in there, or they're just gold. So, you know, the, the video I watch is like, well, this calls for a red pin, this calls for a green pin. If you have it all set up like that, it works quite well. But over time, like I said, I've been doing this for 20 years, uh, or a little less, but been around it and then learned about it here, I don't know, a long time, time ago. Uh, I got this box and uh, had to start doing the rekeying stuff. So, uh, and you know, it's just kind of one of those deals where you know I took it over and had to learn what I'm doing. And I didn't have instructions. I just had the person that had been doing it before me tell me how to do it. Uh, so therefore, I've kind of developed my own techniques and everything like that. Uh, one of the ways to do it is, of course, here three one two three four. Let's pull a three out here. It's got a little bit of a blue tinge to it. Blue. Blues are three. How do you know that is a three if it's not blue? You take your dial calipers right here. Make sure they're zeroed out. Closed. Close it. 217.5. Number three pin is 218. So that's a three pin. That's close enough tolerance right there to be a three pin. So we have a three as your first slot slide it right in the first hole of your uh, cylinder there okay next one we have a one this is off the key gauge to the key pull out a one bottom pin here hold it in your fingers take the dollar calipers or the 1.7157 is 1.72 so you know right there just barely rubbing on it that's a little short but uh, there's enough tolerance in there, you know, 175, 172 right there, you know, that's it's pretty close. That's, you know, that's a one. We'll put it in the second hole. 
Okay, now we have a two. Two pins seem, two bottom pins always seem to get used more than any pin that I've ever had. So, uh, check it out real quick. 195. Bottom two pins and 195 on the box here. Which I'm sure you can look this up on the internet too if you have several locks and you interchange pins and so on and so forth. Alright, so we have a 132 already in the cylinder here. So now we need a three. Go back to now I like to grab you know these blue ones out of here if I'm in a hurry because I know the blue one tinges are the three pins, but here's just a gold one. Is that a two? Is that a four? Because they're pretty close by eye. After a while, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on uh, and pretty much do a very educated guess if you kind of have several of them out there. But that's 217, which uh, number three pin is 218. I can open it up just a hair. There's, I mean, that's close enough. That's a three pin. I know that. Uh, granted, it's just a hair worn, maybe. Uh, the tolerances aren't just quite that tight. Uh, this may be off a little bit, but I can tell that's a three pin by doing that. And we'll put it in here in the four slot. Now we have a five. Let's go to the four bottom pin right here. Okay, some of these have a green tinge to them until you pull them out and then you're not quite sure whether it's green or blue. So I like to check it. Now, number four pin here is a .241 inch, which there's 241. Uh, very handy to have this it makes your your rekeying go quicker because it doesn't mess up you know the tolerances you have so we'll slide that here into the five pin because quick sets only have a, a five uh, pin keyway so now we have a three one two three four in here let me get this in the light here now the actual key pins or the bottom pins are down here in the, in the cylinder here's the key watch them come up see that one come up that one comes up, and when you get the key all the way in here, they are all even across this cylinder. That means the lock will turn because they're the locking pins don't fall down in here, uh, which is the top pins. Uh, as you can see, as you pull it out, some of them come up, some of them go down, but that's one way you know if, if you don't have the dial caliper or so on and so forth you can actually pull the cylinder out stick the key in there like that and put pins in there until they're perfectly smooth across the top and you know the pins you have are the right ones because when the keys in there it's perfectly smooth across the top so checking it right there is very easy yeah you can do an eyeball on it you can do it eyeball right there uh, that's the right pins you know pull the key back out now, since the right pins are in the cylinder here, make sure you keep it upright so they don't fall out or anything like that. The spring. I know all about the springs. Just oh, yeah. watch. You're, you're blocking my light. That's why I keep getting over here. Okay. Uh, a lot of the times it's good to take a cleaner like alcohol and wipe this down if someone's tried to oil the lock with WD-40 or 3-in-1 oil because uh, it starts getting tight after a while if dirt gets in it so on and so forth. The best thing to use is dry graphite loop uh, which I'll show you that here in a minute. But anyways, this cylinder here, the inside cylinder, has the right key pins in it for that key. Now we're going to slide that just in here just like that. You ain't got to use no stupid sliding tool that comes through here and holds the pins up because you re you have removed the cap that holds the locking pins and the springs. So you can just slide this in here like that and once that's done, as long as this is on the top, you can spin this around all you want here and those pins aren't going to go anywhere. So let's get the keyway up right here. That's the way I like to do it. Or it doesn't even have to be upright. You can put it sideways or anything. As long as, as long as the locking pin and springway here is upright, you're not going to have any problems with this lock. As long as it's in the lock, and you can spin it anywhere you want to. Uh, so, anyways, you do that. Now, you need to come down here, like I showed you a little bit ago, uh, about uh, the locking pins, the ones that don't have really any taper to them whatsoever. These are the ones that fall down into these holes right here, just like this, and lock that cylinder in. Now, as I put this key in here, watch this. 
there goes the locking pin out, it's perfectly smooth, they'll turn. But that locking pin is what falls down on these holes if you have a key that's like this. See, I have not inserted it all the way. This one's got a big hole, that locking pin is going to set down in this tumbler and keep it from turning. And you're not going to be able to turn the key unless you have the right key and it's all the way in, so on and so forth. And these pins will push those locking pins up, which have the, the no taper to them like these uh, keyway pins do. And it's not going to let the lock turn. So, you know, you can stick the key in there all you want to. Uh, there it is. Wow, nice and flat. Uh, and the locking pins are going to slide right over this and be just fine. So let's pull a little of the key back out after showing you that. Take the, uh, the casing here, slide that in there, okay. Now you pick up your locking pins like this. I got a 3-1-3-2-3-4. Three, one, three, two, three, one, two, three, so in actuality, I don't have any sixes in here. Usually, the only time I use a six is, or the only time I use a short locking pin, which is a .160 inches, uh, is the only time that I, if, if I have a six bottom pin, I'll use a shorter locking pin. But other than that, I always use the longer locking pins, which you can tell that just hairily, you know, like, and the way I do it is I start here at the back, holding it like this, where the, the cylinder doesn't fall out. And I just drop it right in there. One. Look at this one. There's no taper. Two. Let me find these. Three. Let me find another one here with no taper. I know I just dropped one on the floor, so I'll grab a couple out of my spot here. That's a three. I think. Look down here. Three. Four. Up down in there. Now the fifth one here is a little hard to put in sometimes, so I might stand it up on, just kind of grab it with some tweezers like this, and drop it in this hole right here in the front. There you go. Okay, now if you notice, the lock will not turn no more. That's because the locking pins have fallen down into the actual cylinder, and the the springs here, which is one, two. Three. This is a little bit longer spring. It's going into one hole, so that's a good deal. One. Right, four. This is five. Oh, spring jumped. This this number one hole is kind of hard to get stuff in sometimes. Oh, jumped again. Right here. <clears throat> Let me get a little bit more light on this. There we go. It's all in there. Okay, now all the springs are put in there. Let me get the dog hair off here because sometimes I might mess it up. But as you can see, the springs are above the shear or the upper shear line here, or the, I guess the 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 cap line. Which you know, if you got a spring that's down in the hole and it's not sticking above it, you need to pull that spring out and lengthen it, you know, stretch it just a little bit, or put a longer uh, locking pin in it. But you can take the cap here, which just clips on to these little grooves here on each side kind of squeeze it together and make sure it's a good tight fit and when you put these down here you put it right down on top of them and push it down use both thumbs and go click now you have the pins in there more some more all right, so now you've uh, put the top on here. The springs are in there, the locking pins are in there, and the bottom pins are in there that uh, match it to the key. So when you stick the key in there, the uh, cylinder is free to turn. All right, uh, the video I saw, you put your thumb here, you stick the key in, you can turn it like this, and you pull the key out holding the center thing. This is what I do. Since it's just a single key, lock, it's not a master lock, you put your tail piece in here, you have this groove at the top, you have this groove and then there's not a groove on the bottom side, you stick the groove in just like that, uh, you take the pin right here which has got a little top flange there, you push it right down in here, just like that, put it in there, thumb it in there just right, click, make sure the pin's tight. Because if this thing moves up, it won't lock or unlock the uh, actual bolt. So, you know, you need to check it a couple times like that. Make sure the the uh, snap ring doesn't push up. Because I've had some that have been stretched. And, uh, you know, the key will spin around, around, around like that. But it won't actuate the bolt. But now, you have a lock. 
ten, or just single key. Watch, works. There you go. That right there is how you just key a lock. Very simple. Uh, the quick set video I saw, you know, you take this and you push a uh, plastic cylinder push through thing and everything like that. And then that's just a lot of hogwash. Uh, you don't need to do it that way. You just need to pop this top off and pull your springs and locking pins out. Pull the cylinder out. Put the right pins in there. Make sure it lines up. Uh, put the uh, locking pins back in there, put the springs back in there, pop this on top like that, put your note, put your little snap ring back on there, and make sure the key works. Which, there, there you go, that's how you do that. Uh, my wife's sitting here giving me hand signals. Uh, what, 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 what are you saying? Are you done? I'm done with showing them how to actually just key lock single key. We'll do that. Well, well, next next part of this video, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you to take a break real quick, and I'm gonna show you how to rekey the same lock with this same key, but also make it fit one of these keys. Doesn't matter which one. I'm just showing you how to do it. Uh, which I guess this is my new master key that I've been using. It's master key eight uh, because it's the eighth master key I've used throughout the years. Uh, but uh, as you can see. This tenant key will be the same lock. Tenant key works great. Master key does not work. As you can see, it's this Callahan key with the black spot on it. And I'm gonna get I'm gonna show you how to do that key with that key. And you can key any key to be a master key as long as you do the math right. So here in this next portion, I'll show you how to master key these locks. And then I might even show you how to do the doorknobs and get the cylinders out of the doorknobs and everything like that. So this is going to be a fairly lengthy video. But when, when you get done watching this and listen to what I'm saying, uh, you'll know very much how quick set keys lock, or quick set locks work. Uh, it's one thing I'm very, very schooled on. And uh, I've never read any instructions on them. Uh, except for just a little bit of brief instructional on how to master key them and all of this has been learned over like several several years uh, and get into the real world with the keys or the locks that are a little bit worn what works what doesn't uh, this is probably going to be the best video on YouTube as to do these older quick set deadbolts and uh, doorknobs the way to do them uh, problems you have with them, experience, and how to get around those problems. So uh, let me take a break real quick and uh, give me a drink, and I'll be back to show you how to master key one of these locks.